Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I screwed up big time. I knocked my cooler on the floor. Well, it wasn't attached to the motherboard at the time, but I knocked it on the floor and broke it. There was green coolant everywhere. Well, I'm going to show you what I did to fix it. Now, there are a million different ways you could knock a cooler on the floor and a million different ways it could be damaged and a million different ways you could repair it. But for the particular way that this one was damaged, uh, my solution, spoiler alert, worked. So I'll walk you through the steps of what I did. And remember, this is very much a do this at your own risk kind of a project. There are no claims or guarantees. We'll start with the video I took right after I broke it. So at that point, I wasn't 100% sure exactly how I was going to repair it, but uh, you'll see I figured it out. Well, we had a little mishap there. I uh, managed to knock the cooler on the floor and broke one of the lines off there had to drain some of the glycol out but you can see that thing got snapped right off so I'm going to see if I can make a new fitting and uh, repair this well I realized when I looked at this a little more closely and my experience with using glues and epoxy on plastic pieces especially if they're under any kind of stress they just don't really hold up and this is something you don't want uh, coming loose in your system. So I realize I'm going to have to use a mechanical means to secure this nipple back to the end of the back to the end of the hose there. So what I did was I went ahead and tapped this with an M6 thread and then I tapped this with an M6 thread. It was the closest tap size that uh, would allow threads to be cut in there. Then I went back and I took an M6 bolt and I cut it to the right length and then I drilled through it. Made sure I left enough wall thickness there so the thing is still quite sturdy and that allows me to screw this end into this piece here ensuring a mechanical connection so I screw that in there and then I can put the nipple over the end and what I'll do here we go what I'll do is before I do it Permanently, I'll go ahead and put some of the JB Weld on here. This stuff is amazing. And uh, I'll put that over the threads so that when I screw these together, then I'll have a nice permanent seal. Something that won't leak and it's mechanically strong enough, it'll never break. Okay, so the JB Weld has set up after I screwed this piece together with my quick fix it idea there. We'll see how well that works. Uh, I put a little bit of silicon. Uh, lube on the o-rings there so that it pops in there nice and easily. It was kind of stiff but it rotates nice and smoothly. Next thing to do is to go ahead and refill the system with uh, glycol and uh, probably a 50-50 glycol water mix and then after this pushes into the pump there is a little pin here and then there's a little pin that goes in this hole, so I have to drive that in. And this pin is what locks um, this fitting or the hose there to the pump. So the next thing is to get the glycol in, and then we'll check for leaks. Now at some point you're going to have to put the glycol back into the system. And somewhere, usually on the radiator, on most of the all-in-ones that I've ever seen, there's a fill port. And it's usually covered up with a warranty sticker that will say uh, void. Uh, warranty is void if you remove the sticker. Of course, if you've dropped the cooler on the floor and you've damaged it, you're probably not too worried about the warranty at that point. So you scrape the sticker off, and there's usually a screw or a plug that you can remove, and there's a little O-ring on there, a little rubber seal. And that opens up the fill port. Now the trick is getting the coolant in there, and of course you always want to have your radiator a little higher than your pump so that all your air bubbles come to the top. And to get the coolant in there, it's harder than you think. Now, I used a 50-50 mixture of glycol and uh, water, which is typically what you see in uh, automotive antifreeze. But what I did to get the antifreeze in there, I should say the coolant back in there, is uh, I used an old hypodermic needle, and I pulled the actual needle out with a pair of pliers. And I'm going to open the hole up here in the end of it with a tiny little drill bit. Now, the surface tension of the liquid uh, makes it hard to get through that little hole there because the liquid that's going in and the air that's being displaced trying to come out 
uh, it only has one way to do that. So it can be a little tricky and it can be a little messy. So I use the hypodermic needle really toward the end to sort of top it off. And you always want to shake it a little, get the air bubbles to come out. And then I'll put the plug in, I'll power it up, let the pump run, circulate again to get the air bubbles out so you can uh, take the plug back out and then purge it. But you never want to have the plug out uh, when you power it up because you will have a uh, basically a lawn sprinkler. So I got a little bit of the glycol in here. And the trick is to do this without making a mess. So I'll push a little bit of the coolant in try to work some of the bubbles out and then I'll do a quick pull back on the plunger to help suck some of the air out and let it settle. But it'll take a little while. Now after you get all the bubbles out and you do that final fill, put your screw or plug back in there and secure it. And clean up whatever mess you made. Now I advise, now I've already done this uh, and done the testing, but I advise you do not test this on a system because if there's a leak, uh, you could potentially ruin your system. So I tested mine offline for about a week, I let it run, uh, just powered it up, not being attached to a motherboard. And uh, when I was comfortable that there weren't any leaks, then I attached it to a motherboard and uh, started doing some thermal testing there just to make sure when you bring it up to temperature that uh, there weren't any leaks. Now like I said I powered the system up offline and ran the pump by itself for about a week and there were no leaks at all and then I put it on this motherboard and I've been running it for about a month off and on and I uh, cranked up an overclock got some heat to it and there were no leaks so I'm pretty comfortable that I've got it fixed. Now I forgot to mention earlier to anyone who's curious, um, the system that had the unfortunate meeting with the floor is the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML120L. And of course remember, uh, this particular solution just happened to work in my case. So my story had a happy ending. Uh, that doesn't mean the solution will work for everybody. So always test it offline first before you put it together. And while you have the fill plug out of the radiator, don't turn the system on. And uh, don't ask how I know that. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to do some repairs to something that you might otherwise think is totally trash. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching. Leave me some comments. Don't forget to subscribe.